the fragrance of selfless love that has drawn the world into one family. The truth of an eternal message that has been revealed through every act and word. The fulfillment in service that has been taught by relentless sacrifice. The Lord's own life is indeed His message. Sai Ram, greetings from Prashanti Nilayam. Today is the 26th episode of our month-long tele-serial entitled The Message of the Lord. And the theme that we have chosen for today is service to society. Now there are two reasons why we chose this theme. The first is because Bhagwan Baba regularly advises us to do service. And where students are concerned, Swami lays great emphasis on service to society. The second reason and this is the more important one, is that Bhagwan Baba's life has been one long saga of selfless service to humanity as a whole. Surely, there are some things that we can learn from that. With that preamble, let us now get down to business. Service to society is far more common than we realize. Maybe some of it is done for earning a livelihood. But we do realize where we would be if there was no one to sell vegetables, drive buses, and so on. In fact, it is on account of all such activities that the term the service sector came into existence. True, the service sector is actually a part of the business sector and the service rendered is charged. At the same time, Strange as it might sound, there is a spiritual element involved even here. But we shall come to that later, maybe. When Swami asks us to engage in service, what He means is that we must do something that would help and benefit the poor and the needy. Let us try to understand this in greater detail. The others also belong to you. And we consider the others different from us. The others are not so-called others. They are divine. Whosoever you render service, consider that service rendered to God only. Only to foster that feeling, we undertake so many service activities. You should, all, you should also know for whose sake you are doing service activities. You should know the fundamental truth that you are serving others for your own sake, not for anybody. We should have that. Selfless love in form. And we should participate in service activities in this world. For most of us, service normally means feeding the poor, running medical camps and that sort of thing. Such grassroots service is very important and its value should not be underestimated. In fact, there are many groups engaged in such activities throughout the world. There are people who help the handicapped, people who aid children, people who assist the aged, and so on. When Baba wants us to engage in service, does He want us to do this sort of thing? You imagine that you have been helping others. They are not great service anyway. See that. Such feelings don't find a place in your heart. Then only it will be true service in spirit. What is service? 
ఏదో మనం సేవలు చేయటం సర్వీస్ అనుకుంటున్నాం వి థింక్ సమ్ యాక్టివిటీ ఇస్ సర్వీస్ ది బెస్ట్ వే టు లవ్ గాడ్ ఇస్ టు లవ్ ఆల్ సర్వ్ ఆల్ ది బెస్ట్ వే టు లవ్ గాడ్ ఇస్ టు లవ్ ఆల్ సర్వ్ ఆల్ ప్రేమ చేత మనం ప్రవర్తించాలి we have to do service with love ha prema chetane manam ee yokka panulu cheyali we have to do all activities with love appude nijame ettundi prema anetundi yokka positive lekunda enni sevalu chesina avanta negative gaane maaruthuntayi without this positivity of love how our number of services you render all... the fact is most of the service done by various organizations ngos as they are often called these days is well intentioned further the service is rendered in a humanitarian spirit there is absolutely no question that such service has done a lot of good to millions all over the world keeping that in mind let us remember that when we do service swami wants us to add something unique and extra which is the spiritual element that something extra being very special Let us spend a few moments trying to understand its significance. Normally, when a person does service, it is not unusual for that person to think of the good he or she has done to others. Swami on the other hand is quite emphatic that we should not spend any time thinking about any good we might have done. What is more important says Baba we should reflect intensely on whether doing service has made us a better person in any way We are sure this would come as a terrific surprise to most people but there is a good and deep reason why Swami wants us to introspect in that manner He says that while it is true service when it is always rendered to help the needy for a person on the spiritual path service means something much more baba adds that there are three things a person must pay careful and serious attention to firstly the person must not expect any reward or appreciation or even a pat on the back for rendering service maybe others might praise the person for his or her dedication commitment etc however that praise must sit lightly and not go to the head rather it must drop off like water from a duck's back next the one who render service must see god in the one who is served this is very important and this by the way is the reason why poor feeding is invariably referred to as narayana seva in sai circles it is never called poor feeding although in practical terms that is what it often is thirdly at the end of this service let me think has it helped me in reducing my ego in any way has it made me more aware of the various kinds of problems that people face in their daily lives how widespread is the problem and can it be eradicated completely and dealt with on a larger scale baba's remarks are important and merit some attention because it is in the spiritual angle that the service rendered by sai devotees differs qualitatively from the service that ngos normally engage in Since the year 2000 the students of Swami's university spend about 10 days or so every year going out in thousands every day to neighboring villages to distribute food and clothing and also to spread Swami's love This service called Grama Seva or village service is usually done during the Dasara festival which comes during the September October period Many outsiders often say You know it is all nice to take out students to villages and all that but frankly what can one day of service in a village once a year do for that village I'm not sure it is worth it Superficially what such critics say might appear to carry some meaning 
but look at it this way. There are a little over 400 universities in India. In how many universities do students ever spend even one single day mingling with poor villagers, going door to door, spreading love and cheer? In fact, students living in urban areas hardly know what villages are like, much less about the fact that even today, 70% of the people in India live in rural areas. Baba, of course, knows all about the problems of villagers having been born in one and having lived in that same place all his life. You know something? In the year 1985, that is to say in the year of his 60th birthday, Baba went to a village called Amegundapalayam, about 20 kilometers from Puttaparthi. This village is not too far from Puttaparthi, but even today, the access road is very bad since the village is in the forest region. No wonder the village has hardly improved. Getting back to Swami's visit to this village, Swami, in a discourse given to the villagers and to the students who went with him, said, God, the Vedas say, has thousands of eyes. India has thousands of villages, and those villages are my eyes. So, dear students, no matter where you go, Make sure you protect my eyes. What could be more clear? It is because of that early signal, plus the training that students get during the annual Grama Seva, that many ex-students now do rural service all over the country, wherever they are, especially during weekends. Now, are there other universities whose graduates do regular village service in a similar manner after they become employed? None at all. So you see, villages around Puttaparthi may not benefit immensely from the once a year visit, but a seed is planted and that bears fruit all over the country. Time now to return to a couple of points we skipped earlier, but which are important nevertheless. Let us go back to the service sector. Today the service sector is huge with people engaged in all kinds of activities. All these activities, be it driving taxis or working as nurses or doing construction work or any other activity for that matter, involves people engaged in some kind of work that benefits the public at large in some manner or other. A traffic policeman serves society just as much as a doctor and a teacher do. True, the airline staff, the teachers and the policemen all do their respective jobs for a salary. But remember, often they do much more than what one might expect them to do on the basis of salary alone. During the famous 9-11 attack in New York City, so many firemen belonging to the New York City Fire Department lost their lives. Similarly, during the famous Mumbai terror attacks, many policemen lost their lives as also people doing service in hotels. Clearly, these are calls beyond normal duty. What we do not realize is that this sort of thing happens far more frequently than we realize and almost everywhere. Why? Because there is innate goodness in people. Which is why Krishna says in the Gita and Baba also stresses, 1. Whatever be the work you do, think you are doing it for me. 2. Offer the work to me. And 3. Do so with love. This is how, says Baba, work can be converted into worship. Do you see what a great idea and convenience this is? God in His mercy tells us, I know how busy you are, so don't bother about going to a temple or church or whatever to pray. All you have to do is to convert your work into worship. You don't know how to do that? Well, here's how you do it. Suppose you are an airline pilot. Just take a minute off before you start taxiing for takeoff. While flying, 
just go about doing your normal work. But when you land and your aircraft has come to a stop, take a minute off to offer thanks to God and offer the entire flying to Him. Your spiritual bank account would register a huge deposit. You can do the same thing if you are a doctor. Just say a short prayer before you start the surgery. After that, just be busy about your surgery. Concentrate on your work for that is critical for the patient. It is when you do that, you treat the patient as God. And when it is all over, just say a short prayer thanking God. So that's how simple Baba has made it all for us. Now let us understand this message again in simple words. It basically means one might be doing work as a part of one's job. However, says Krishna, even that work most likely would involve service to the public in some manner or the other. In every case, says Krishna, think you are working for God no matter who your employer is. After all, in the ultimate analysis, God is the boss of everyone. Remembering that God is always the boss, work diligently and sincerely, seeing God in the person whom you are dealing with. Finally, tell God, God, I did that work for you and I am now offering it to you with love. Please be so kind as to accept it. That's all. It's so simple. You do your normal work and get paid. But by thinking of God and offering it to Him, your spiritual bank balance also goes up. So, it's a win-win situation and what better deal could one ask for? We all do work, no doubt. But there are some people who really take their work very seriously. And out of such earnestness and dedication, a lot of good can also come. Here is a real-life example. This occurred in the city of Mumbai. It happened many years ago when a general election was about to be held. A general election in India is a pretty big affair. And they don't come any bigger because India is the largest democracy in the world. Naturally, it takes a lot of preparation, plenty of hard work and hundreds of thousands of election officials to get the job done. A lot of volunteers are drafted for the purpose and during the election I referred to, one such draftee volunteer was a young lady doctor doing medical research in a leading hospital in Bombay called the Nair Hospital. She was thus a doctor plus a PhD. So when she was drafted for election duty, which many consider as routine and mundane work, many of her colleagues were very angry that a PhD was being taken away to waste her time doing some silly election job. They said to her, you should not have agreed, you should have refused, it is beneath your dignity. The lady just smiled and said, well, I had no choice and so I agreed. Came election day and off this young PhD went to do her duty in a booth in a famous slum called Dharavi, which has since become world famous because of an Oscar winning film. Next day, her boss, the dean of the faculty in Nair Hospital, asked this lady, so what was the work you had to do in the election booth? She replied, I had to apply an ink spot over the finger after the person had cast the vote. That does not sound exciting to me, replied her boss. The young lady then said, Madam, actually I found something strange. What was that? Well, I noticed that the nails of most of the women voters were white instead of being pink. I suspect all of them are suffering from hemoglobin deficiency. That is serious because if these women become pregnant, the babies would have all kinds of deformities. Many of those babies would then end up in our hospital and I would have to do the surgery. These are difficult operations, you know, and we must do something immediately to attend to the situation. The Dean of Nair Hospital then promptly swung into action, 
organized a detailed survey which revealed that over 70% of the women in the slum had a hemoglobin count of less than 10 grams which was quite alarming. A nutrition improvement as also an awareness campaign was immediately started and over a period of time the incidence of hemoglobin deficiency was brought down to 10%. Here then is a wonderful example of how a young and highly qualified lady treated a mundane job as important and was alert enough to observe something she need not have bothered about as a result of which an entire slum benefited. That really is what Karma Yoga is all about. Now, is this all that complicated to understand? One last point and we are through. There is an important activity that does not involve field work, but it is also service, very important service we might add. Take climate change for example. This, as everyone knows, is of critical importance to the very future of humanity. Meetings and conferences are held all the time to discuss this, but after that, little happens which is both sad and disappointing. The reason why most of these conferences end in stalemate is that the people attending represent different interest groups, each of which is keen to protect its own self-interest. People may say great things in their speeches, but at the end of the day, selfishness and groupism scuttle decisions. Meanwhile, both the planet and the people on it suffer. If we are really serious about solving problems, and solving global problems is also a service, in fact a great service, then we have to pay serious attention to the spirit in which problems are to be solved and that precisely is where the spiritual aspect enters the picture. We are sure all that would have sounded rather confusing and so, by way of explaining the point, let us take you back to an earlier era when the Lord came as Sri Rama. People in India know all about the Rama avatar, but for the benefit of people overseas who might not be aware, this incarnation took place a long, long time ago. Some might have witnessed the celebration of the birth anniversary of Rama, which usually comes in the March-April period. It is not possible to go here into the story of Rama, nor is it necessary, since Baba has talked about it many times. Besides, he has also written a book about the Rama avatar. Towards the end of the Ramayana, Rama invades Lanka in order to wage war against an evil king called Ravana, who was the ruler of Lanka. Earlier, Ravana had abducted Rama's consort, Sita, and it was to punish Ravana as well as rescue Sita that Rama invaded Lanka. That is the historical background to the incident we are about to narrate. When Ravana comes to know that Rama's forces are invading Lanka, he hurriedly calls all his counsellors for a meeting. He begins the meeting by saying that the advice one receives from one's counsellors fall into three categories. The good, the mediocre and the bad. Good advice is arrived upon by the counsellors by unanimous decision. It seeks good for all and is supported strongly by the scriptures. Mediocre advice is based on weak consensus among the counsellors holding differing points of view. Bad advice or third-rate advice is basically a cacophony where the advisors hold strongly to their own points of view and shout down their opponents. It becomes something like a competition and nobody bothers about the viewpoints of others even though they may be valid. These words might have come from a so-called bad guy but they are worth reflecting upon nevertheless. Why? Because they explain why the manner in which we are currently trying to solve all problems is actually a mediocre approach. The point is simple. If we engage in horse trading while trying to solve really serious problems, all we would get in the end would be an anemic consensus. And that after spending a huge amount of money to hold the conference. Experts invariably use their head 
to solve the problems. The head is very good in creating problems, but very poor in solving them. And that precisely is where the heart or the spiritual element comes into the picture. Incidentally, it is ironic that the perceptive remark about what constitutes a good piece of advice came from Ravana, who got into a problem himself because of the mischief done by his head. So you see, service is not just poor feeding, running medical camps and things like that. It is a term that covers a broad spectrum of activities, including the work that we do. Anything becomes service if it is done with God in mind as an offering to God. That is how service becomes spiritual and work becomes worship. And that is what Swami has been telling us repeatedly, again and again. That is all we have today for this episode. We hope that you join us tomorrow for the next episode in this series. Until then, Jai Sai Ram.